Yeah. Oh, are you a student of Sidney Goodman's or Liz Gosman? Liz Gosman. Okay. I probably should have made a big gold L. <laughs> or O. Or L O. So, what's what's happening? Uh, well, we came to see Sydney's show, and uh, you're in it. Do you have? Well, yeah, but that's not why I came. I came for this. I mean, Sydney's drawings were just—they knocked me out. Snakes and snails and puppy dog tails. That's what little boys are made of. Sugar and spice and everything nice. That's what little girls are made of. <laughs> I am probably about to piss a lot of people off. Oh well, it won't be the first time. This summer, the Pennsylvania Academy is showcasing the work of two of its most prominent artist slash faculty members, Sidney Goodman and Elizabeth Osborne. Make no mistake, these shows are both great, but seen side by side, they are a textbook display of gender stereotyping. Not that there's anything wrong with that, I must hastily add. Sydney's work is a graphic representation of violent action. Graphic not only in the sense of very realistic depictions of horrific situations, but also all the works are drawings. Liz's paintings are all about beauty, calm, and luxury. Her figures are passive, dreamy, and indolent, lost in reverie. Hers is an inward world. It is about looking and being seen. There is a wonderful blend of melancholy and hedonism in these gorgeous works. The beauty of the world is overwhelming, but it cannot last. Sydney's work has much in common temperamentally with the Northern Europeans of the late Gothic, like Matthias Grunewald. The tortured flesh is the repository of great spiritual lessons. Life may be a hard struggle, but within that struggle comes the possibility of nobility, meaning, and redemption. Liz's work comes out of the Matissean strain of art, with a good mixture of the California figurative painters like Diebenkorn, Nathan Oliveira, and Joan Brown as well. I had both of these artists as teachers back in the late 70s. Sidney soon developed an ardent following amongst many of us male students who found him to be friendly, funny, and very cool. He was the Marlon Brando of art. Bo Bartlett, Vincent Desiderio, and Edgar Gerens were all particularly close to Sidney and have work in the Academy's Legacy show, which is up this summer, as well as the two solo shows. I never knew Liz Osborne particularly well, but to me, she was beauty, grace, refinement, and talent all thrown together. To me, she was the Grace Kelly of art, gorgeous, reticent, but possessing of enormous depth. Among the many students who became close to her were Anne Seidman, Ruslan Kais, and Barry Goldberg. So where am I going with this whole masculine-feminine theme? And might it actually break down somewhere in my application of it to these two artists? Well, one thing to think about is the emotional and intellectual tone of the work. The stereotype might have it that women are emotional creatures and men are coolly analytical. But I get the exact opposite feeling as I look at these two shows. It is Sydney's work that seems emotional, operatic almost, and there is an analytical rigor that almost but not quite hides the intense emotion of Liz's paintings. Both of these artists are in their 70s now, and the ideas about gender and gender identity in art have been evolving rapidly in the last 30 years or so. Sydney's legacy may be a sort of Hemingway-esque manliness in art. His influences resulted in heroically large-scale images about the struggles of life. Liz's work feeds into a stream of exquisitely balanced and beautifully crafted compositions, generally of a more intimate scale, sometimes figurative, just as often abstract. You said this was going to be a fence, but it wasn't. <laughs>